Good day, learners! Welcome back to another Science 8 episode and welcome to our first episode in Quarter 3. Once again, my name is Ma'am Hannah and I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. In this episode, we are going to explore what matter is made of and go beyond what your eyes can see. Let's get started! Today, let's talk about matter. Do you know the word matter? Let's put your prior knowledge into practice by doing this activity. For 15 seconds, try to look for 3 examples of matter that can be found in your kitchen. Are you ready? Let's go! Oh, look what I found! I have a plate, a plastic cup, and a spoon here. So, what about you? What did you find? So, do you think these three examples I found in our kitchen are examples of matter? Yes, of course. So, at this moment, did you recall the meaning of matter? So, anything which has mass and occupy space is known as matter. Do you believe these three materials have mass and make up space? So before we answer that, let's define the difference between mass and volume. Mass is the amount of matter an object has. When describing mass, we usually use the units kilogram and gram. Volume, on the other hand, is the amount of space that an object occupies and we usually use the units liters or milliliters to describe volume. So these three materials obviously have mass and volume and therefore classify as matter. Everything around us is made up of matter, such as your ball pen, your self-learning modules, the table beside you, and the water you drink, the air you breathe, and all living things. Everything around you are made of matter, and they all have a specific mass and take up space. In this episode, we are going to explore the characteristics of the particles of matter by doing some simple yet exciting experiments that you can try at home. So our most essential learning competency is explain the properties of solids, liquids, and gases based on the particle nature of matter. Matter can be classified as solid, liquid, or gas. To explain the properties of these three common states of matter, we will discuss the four characteristics of the particle nature of matter. So these are the four characteristics of the particles of matter. First, matter is composed of tiny particles. Second, the particles have spaces between them. Third, the particles are moving all the time. And last, the particles of matter attract each other. Let's now start investigating these characteristics in our experiment table. Let's go! So now, let's look at the first characteristic of the particles of matter. Matter is composed of tiny particles. So we have some sugar and a cup of water. I'm going to mix the sugar into the water. longer visible. What happens to the sugar? So I'm going to taste the water. Mmm! It tastes sweet, indicating that it contains sugar. But why is sugar no longer visible? The sugar particles have thoroughly mixed with the water particles. 
The sugar is broken down into tiny particles by the water. It's so small that we can see it with our naked eyes. Therefore, it demonstrates that matter is composed of tiny or very small particles. I have here another simple experiment that has further shown this characteristic of the particle of matter. I have a powdered dye and 4 cups of water here. The first cup contains 200 ml of water and the remaining cups contain 100 ml of water. I'm going to add 1 teaspoon of powdered dye to our first cup. Then gradually pour half of the mixture of the first cup into our second cup. The same goes for the third and fourth cups. particles have spaces between them. Again, I have here a glass of water and some sugar. I'll put a teaspoon of sugar in the water and carefully monitor the water level. So what is the volume of the sugar water solution? Is there a rise in water level? Hmm, obviously not. Why? Because sugar particles can fit between the spaces of water particles when dissolved in water. This demonstrates that water is composed of tiny particles with spaces between them. Now, I'll be using a syringe, sugar, and water for the next experiment. Let's pull the plunger of the syringe until it reaches the 30 ml mark. Then, I'll press my thumb against the plunger's tip and push the plunger once with my other thumb. So as you can see, the plunger can be pushed all the way to the 15 ml level of the syringe before returning to the 26 ml level. This time, I'm going to suck the water up to 30 ml of the syringe. Again, I'm going to tightly cover the tip of the syringe with my thumb and try to push the plunger. Happen. Obviously, we cannot push the plunger in the syringe with water inside. We felt the resistance of the water to be compressed. And finally, I'll put the sugar into the syringe. And as I did with the water, I covered the tip of the syringe with my thumb and pushed the plunger with my other thumb. So what did you notice? Are we able to compress the sugar? Sugar as a solid cannot be compressed because the particles are so close together. 
The spacing between the particles is extremely small and there is no way for them to get any closer. Meanwhile, the plunger could not be pushed into the syringe with water because water is not as compressible as air. The particles of liquid are closer to each other and it's difficult to get them any closer. Lastly, air, being a gas, can be compressed because there are large spaces between the particles. It can be compressed causing the particles to come closer. Now, let's proceed to the third characteristic of the particles of matter. The particles are moving all the time. I'm going to use the powdered dye and water mixture we made earlier and slowly add a little drop of it along the side of this water-filled bottle. Then, let's set this bottle aside without disturbing the setup and wait for 10 minutes before observing the water inside the bottle. So when we wait for 10 minutes, let's conduct our next experiment to demonstrate this characteristic. And I have a guess. Mal Daria. For this ex experiment, she will sit with spray her favorite perfume on her body while we are one meter apart. So do you think I can smell Mom Daria's perfume? Of course! And it smells great! So how come I can smell Mom Daria's perfume even though we are a meter apart? Simply because the perfume particles are moving and as they move, they reach my nose which is why I smell the perfume. Now, going back to our plastic bottle, let's wait for the remaining time before we get it. Time is up! Let's check out our plastic bottle and see what happens. As you can see, the dye has spread throughout the water, as the resulting mixture is nearly the same color as the dye. This simple experiment shows that matter particles are constantly moving. The particles of dye and water mixture break down into tiny particles as they fall into the water. And because the dye particles and the water are constantly moving, the dye particles spread throughout the water. So in solid, the particles vibrate slowly at fixed position because the particles are so close with each other. Therefore, solid particles do not flow easily. In liquid, the particles can move around much faster than solid particles and can slide past each other because they have enough spaces between them. In gas, the particles move freely at high speeds because of the large space between the particles. Therefore, liquid and gas particles can flow easily. So now, let's proceed to the last characteristic of the particles of matter. The particles of matter attract each other. To show this characteristic, I have a piece of metal here. Can I break this one? I'm afraid I can do that. As you can see, the particles in this type of object attract each other very strongly, making it difficult to break. What about this cracker? Of course, I can. I can also cut the water or the air. The force of attraction between the particles in this type of matter is too weak. So based on these examples, we can conclude that the attraction force varies between substances. But it can show us that the particles of matter surely attract each other. 
In solid, the attractive forces between the particles are strong enough that the particles do not move past each other. As a result, solid has a specific shape and volume. Meanwhile, in liquid, the attractive forces between particles are strong enough to hold the specific volume but not strong enough to keep particles sliding over each other. Therefore, liquid has a specific volume but no specific shape. It only assumes the shape of the container it occupies. Lastly, in gas, there are less or essentially no attractive forces between particles because the kinetic energy of gas particles is greater than the attractive forces between them. They are much farther apart and freely move away from each other. Therefore, gas has no specific shape or volume. So before we finish this lesson, let's review the four characteristics of the particle nature of matter. Always keep in mind that almost everything around us is made of matter. Now, let's check your overall understanding by completing this activity. How much did you learn? Let's find out! This quiz is divided into five categories. Answer each question according to its category. Question 1. Multiple choice. This state of matter has a definite shape and volume with particles closely packed together with little movement. Correct! The answer is solid. Question 2. True or false? Liquids have a definite volume but no definite shape. Correct! The answer is false. Question 3. Fill in the blank. Matter is made of blank. Excellent! Matter is made of tiny particles. Question 4. Yes or no? Gas particles can be compressed because there are large spaces between the particles. Very good! The answer is yes. Question 5. Video question. When you bring two drops of water near each other and allow them to touch, why do they combine immediately and become one drop? Correct! Because the water molecules are attracted to each other. Did you get all the right answers? If so, everyone did a great job. To wrap up this episode, let's look at the properties of solids, liquids, and gases and identify the particle nature of matter that is responsible for each property. So that's all about this episode. I hope you've learned something new. Always remember that you have mass and take up space, which means you matter. See you in the next episode. Happy learning and stay safe. Bye!